I do see Mr. Palos as an example of someone taking his seat. Thank you very much. Mr. Blažević, the same, very encouraging. <laughs> this session will not be long. It will not take, it will take roughly one hour, so you will have time to relax, uh, relax afterwards. So I will tell you the rules of this session. Every uh, one of our two speakers was asked to speak for five to ten minutes. I will be, I will set up my iPhone counting the minutes. After seven minutes, I will show them the sign that there is three left. And after ten minutes, I will show them that uh, the time is off. In order then to have discussion uh, here on the podium, but also with your participation, uh, there will be a microphone and you would be encouraged, or and I'm encouraging you to ask uh, very clear, very short, short questions or uh, give uh, very clear and short statements uh, that our panelists can, uh, uh, can react. So please think about the questions during the time of their introductory remarks that we have a lively debate. Uh, but again, I must warn you that we will uh, finish exactly on time at 12.30. Uh, the topic of the uh, session is uh, human rights and security, and uh, I'm glad that uh, Eva Romontsova from Ministry of Interior accepted the uh, invitation of the organizers, and uh, Josh Muravchik, who came as far as from uh, Washington, D.C., also is uh, going to participate. Uh, and the topic, uh, human rights and security, I think is uh, very up-to-date, uh, and again up-to-date also here in Europe. Uh, and once Europe is uh, being threatened by terrorism, once on the borders of uh, Europe or European Union and NATO, uh, there are very unstable situations. Uh, we are witnessing uh, several wars, uh, collapsing countries, uh, uh, re-emerging dictatorships uh, in the Middle East uh, as well as uh, in the East uh, from us. Uh, and of course, there are spillovers inside the uh, inside of our countries and. Uh, societies. Uh, without uh, uh, security, there cannot be rule of law. Without the rule of law, there cannot be uh, democracy. Uh, and without democracy, there cannot be human rights. And human rights cannot be uh, uh, really, and all the liberties really protected. So we need security. We need defense and security in order to uh, uh, preserve our freedom and democracy and liberty. At the same time, the security measures and defense measures can be, of course, misused, not in order to protect our uh, human rights and our liberties, uh, uh, but in order to harm them. And there is always a very thin line which we have to walk and which we have to again come back and ask questions and critical questions uh, if we need to move one more step or if we should rather pause. Uh, we have to look into the threats uh, and we have to look uh, very much uh, and much more often and much more deeply uh, also into the new technologies because the new technologies are enabling us to protect our freedom, uh, so our democracy, our rule of law, uh, but also they can be misused. And you can very well see that on the issues of terrorism. Uh, most of the terrorist attacks uh, uh, can be and are in fact also in Europe uh, 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 uncovered uh, due to human intelligence as well as signal intelligence meaning the new, new technologies. Most of the terrorist acts are uh, found out before they appear, before they happen, during the time of the organization or the radicalization through screening of social media. There is usually nothing like lone wolves. And if there are lone wolves, that even lone wolves sometimes uh, do give you a mark uh, or a sign that they are ready to act, uh, ready to commit a crime or terrorist act uh, because they do use social media and they have, uh, uh, they have the need to tell to the others uh, so, and to, to, to leave some testimony. So if we screen the social media, if we use all the technological ad advances, then we can very much prevent many terrorist attacks. But we can also misuse, and our intelligence agencies and our states can misuse such information for tax optimization or evasion uh, issues or for political struggles. 
And there we go to the resilience of the societies and how much really we use the technology in order to protect and preserve our freedoms and human rights uh, uh, or if we uh, misuse it and uh, harm, uh, do harm both uh, uh, liberties and uh, human rights. Uh, and by that, at the end, I don't think that we gain uh, any prosperity uh, or any better, uh, better living. So those are the issues which uh, uh, at least some of them and from the, their, the angle of our uh, distinguished speakers we will touch. And also I'm encouraging you uh, to uh, prepare your questions or short uh, comments. Uh, uh, as I told you, there will be microphone uh, going uh, uh, around after we finish the first round. So I would ask uh, Eva Romancova uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to give her opening remarks. Uh, and I'm setting up my iPhone. <laughs> Thank you for the floor. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the uh, organizers for the opportunity to speak Czech because I would be really nervous to speak English in front of such an outstanding audience. So let me let me continue in Czech. Musím říct, že jsme se tady s my colleague and I were laughing here a little bit because uh, Mr. Boyer took away most of our ideas just in his introductory remark. But as a civil servant, I have um, in front of me a list of rules that should be um, observed by the government if there is a desire to find balance between human rights and protection of, and, and security. Uh, this. Uh, and if that balance is attained, uh, then uh, uh, even, uh, even a country like the Czech Republic could have a chance to, um, to, to, to do good. Liberal democratic uh, governments are facing threats uh, that attack them and they have to defend themselves. There are threats today which have a potential to remove democracy and that could result in a situation that the whole list of human rights, the whole catalog of human rights would no longer exist. So the basic principle is that the security of the population and protection of human rights should not be only in conflict. They should go hand in hand. The second uh, rule is that the government has to look for solutions in the laws that exist. It's in order to maintain legal certainty and trust of the population. And this is the reason why the existing legislation has to have um, generous solutions for emergencies. It has to have possibilities to limit human uh, rights um, to some extent or to deal with situation where democracy as such is jeopardized. So in a situation where there is no emergency, when constructive debates take place, when th there is not the ballast of uh, populism, in those times we can adopt uh, rules that have behind them uh, the social consensus and the critical debate that these rules are fair and could be applied in the future if need be. An important element here is enforceability of laws. If a government gives up on enforcing its laws quite quickly and effectively, and it, that in itself is a threat. This is a topical problem for the Czech Republic because the Czech Republic has deficiencies in speediness and effectiveness of uh, legal proceedings. And we are quite frequently criticized for that. And therefore, we need to work intensively on the enforceability of laws. Because if laws are not enforced, then this is the first step going towards the downhill slide that ends with uh, populism. That was the detour, but 
speaking about legislation in effect and measures to control emergencies, that results or that must go hand in hand with another rule that is for the government to limit the use of these uh, rules only to situations when it is necessary and without extending it, extending it in time. I believe it is better to have an emergency situation declared three times in a row rather than maintain it for a longer period. It has to be used with a lot of discretion or limitation. So if the threat is continuous and the government uh, continues to apply these measures and limit human rights for a longer period of time, uh, that's not desirable. But even if we have this legal framework in place, this, there may be a need for new measures or administrative uh, um, measures. Uh, in, in connection with terrorism, these new me measures would be in the area of criminal law, and we have uh, seen examples in Western Europe where they adopt such measures or su such uh, laws. We have seen proposals in this country, and these need to be discussed without prejudice and openly. It is good that human rights defenders are critical of these uh, proposed measures. But if, these, if this criticism is a priori, if it is without any uh, rational basis, then we are in a situation that these measures cannot be introduced in a reasonable scope. For example, fighting organized crime requires specific uh, procedures on the part of law enforcement. Enforcement. The same goes for terrorism. Fighting terrorism requires a certain specific procedures which may be different from the standard criminal procedure. And because um, thankfully we have no experience with terrorist attacks in, in this country, we do not know how to handle this situation. Generally speaking, law enforcement has quite strong possibility have quite strong possibilities to limit civil rights, uh, limiting uh, freedom, uh, uh, curtailing um, ownership rights. Uh, these are uh, powers that law enforcement have, and no other bodies have. And this is right, and there is a social consensus that this is the case, but there, it has to be clearly defined when these powers can be used by law enforcement under very strict control. So if you have um, an excessive use of this power, it needs to be investigated and punished accordingly and uh, preventively um, ha handled for the future. Last year, there was uh, an audit conducted on the national security strategy. That audit uh, scrutinized the legislative tools of the government and other measures of the government how to oppose terrorism. And it was found out that limitations on human rights are not excessive. Uh, it was only limited to uh, certain uh, certain measures to be used, such as interception in um, under specific uh, circumstances. But that's still in the um, area of discussions only. The balance between protecting human rights and protecting the population that is maintaining security, that balance is um, conditional upon a realistic debate. The worst thing is that it should get too polarized. If there is a new um, a suggestion, uh, a proposal of a new law. And if you have the debate about that extremely polarized, uh, then you are getting into 
uh, 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 ration, an irrational situation that uh, is not a matter of fact situation. So the discussion should take place um, in a situation when there is n when there are no acute circumstances where we are in a phase that is well balanced and this is right now for for us we can ha base ourselves on the experiences of western democracies who had intense experiences in the past years with terrorism my last comment the but you may have the best legislation ever you may be able to protect human uh, rights completely in keeping with international treaties. But even if you have that in place, you still need to face the reality and that is which is common here in Central Europe, growth of populism and um, and and um, and nostalgia for the uh, previous regimes. Part of the population is longing for an authoritarian uh, rule. So if people themselves don't have the will uh, to be free, then no legislation can help them in this regard. The ocean. Uh. Thank you, Thomas, and uh, uh, thanks to uh, Michael Zantowski and the uh, and the uh, Hava Library for uh, inviting me here. Uh, I will uh, talk, uh, address some of the same subjects, but with more emphasis on the American experience. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, as uh, our moderator said, human rights really means democracy. That is, the two are not the same. But uh, democracy is the system of government that is predicated on human rights and that has built in mechanisms for the protection of human rights. And if we have seen over history that democracies uh, have many times been destroyed, uh, starting with Athens, the very first democracy. And of course, I, I suppose I don't even need to, uh, uh, to, 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 to say this here in uh, Prague because uh, Czechoslovakia was a democracy that was destroyed by enemies both from within and from without. And both of those dangers uh, uh, always exist. And so democracies uh, must be able to defend themselves and must defend themselves. And uh, when they do act to defend themselves, it always creates a degree of tension uh, with uh, with the enjoyment of rights uh, within the democracy. And yet that tension, I believe, can be managed. And I, I think the historic record shows us that it can be managed. Uh, there were uh, uh, various tyrants, most uh, dramatically Hitler, who had great contempt for the democracies and believed that uh, democracies were inherently soft and weak. Uh, but in the 20th century, the democracies succeeded uh, in defeating first one and then the other of the two great totalitarian challenges uh, that uh, rose against democracy. <coughs> uh, but uh, in uh, fighting these wars, uh, the democracies uh, have always experienced, and these wars and others, have always experienced certain uh, infringements on the uh, the, the, the rights of the citizens or on civil liberties. Uh, and in the American case, uh, the two most dramatic uh, infringements, wartime infringements on, uh, on rights in our history also happened to occur in the two wars that did the most to vindicate and advance human rights or protect and advance human rights in the long run. I'm talking about World War II and the American Civil War. Uh, in uh, World War II, we not only had censorship, but President Roosevelt uh, put uh, our Japanese and some German and Italian Americans uh, in uh, detention camps. 
uh, <coughs> and uh, in retrospect, it's hard to justify having done that. Uh, but that ended, and we did have the uh, uh, momentous success of victory over uh, Hitlerism and also fasc Italian fascism and Japanese militarism. In the Civil War, uh, the actions taken by President Lincoln uh, may have been necessary. They seem arguably more uh, necessary to the war uh, if, uh, than, than the actions of President Roosevelt. But, but President Lincoln declared martial law. He suspended the uh, right to habeas corpus. He closed down newspapers when he heard that the state of Maryland might vote in its state legislature to secede from the United States and join the Confederacy, he sent soldiers to arrest some of the legislatures so they couldn't vote uh, to do that. <clears throat> and he was denounced very widely uh, for, uh, for being a tyrant. Uh, and yet the victory that he was able to achieve in that war was the single by far the single greatest leap forward of human rights within the United States in American history, uh, ending the great disgrace of, of slavery. <clears throat> One thing Lincoln did not do with all these uh, powers that he took to himself was that he did not cancel the election of 1864, which was still at the height of the war. He did not cancel the election because he recognized a clear line between the well-being of the republic that he was trying to save and his own uh, political interests. Uh, <clears throat> and so he, uh, he, he allowed himself to be freely challenge for re-election uh, in that year. Uh, we can, this is a really important point, and we can draw in American history a strong contrast uh, between uh, what Lincoln did in drawing that line and another famous episode in American history uh, in, in, in the 1950s, and that was uh, the rise of uh, Senator McCarthy. Uh, Senator McCarthy uh, made his issue the opposition to domestic communist subversion in the United States. And there was domestic communist subversion. And it was a threat and uh, a danger to have people working in positions of trust in the United States government whose true loyalty was to the Soviet government. But uh, McCarthy was not really after the communists so much as he was after the Democrats, whom uh, he uh, uh, called the, the bedfellows of international communism. Uh, my point is that his motives were very much uh, politics rather than the welfare of the country. Uh, we can uh, contrast that again with a later moment in uh, uh, a, and in the year 2001, after or the period following 9/11, when the Bush administration uh, introduced various measures in the war against terror that were controversial, and I'm thinking especially of the collection of metadata about uh, phone calls between the United States and abroad. And without getting into the uh, details of this program, the point was that, to my knowledge, no one ever accused the Bush administration of doing this for some political advantage of its own. Perhaps it was the wrong thing to do, but there was no question that Bush and his, uh, uh, and his colleagues were trying to face this new problem of, of, of massive domestic terrorism and find what solutions they could. Again, we can contrast that 
with what's going on this year with the uh, administration of President Trump, with the uh, uh, ban on immigrants from certain countries that was introduced, which seemed to be clearly designed more for political reasons. Uh, it was uh, the brainchild of uh, President Trump's chief strategist, uh, Mr. Bannon, uh, more designed for political reasons than it was for the security of the country. So I give you these contrasts because I think we uh, can try to uh, look for certain uh, key guidelines in terms of the ongoing balance that has to be struck between uh, uh, taking measures to defend democratic countries uh, uh, and knowing that these measures will to some degree uh, infringe on uh, human rights. And uh, uh, a, a few that seem to me most important are, one, uh, is the threat real? Uh, we, we've seen several cases around the world in, in the recent times uh, uh, with uh, Putin and Russia, Erdogan and Turkey, who destroyed democracy in their countries, claiming that they were defending against uh, uh, threats, sometimes maybe even threats that were created by their own uh, secret services. Uh, secondly, uh, is there a clear line of separation between the security of the country and the political interests of the, the uh, government in power. Uh, thirdly, are the security measures that are being taken uh, uh, narrowly uh, directed to try to meet uh, the threat? I mean, c contrast in the United States what Bush did trying to counter uh, the, uh, uh, to, to trace al-Qaeda terrorists uh, with what Trump did to try to just say no entry into the United States for anyone from eight different uh, uh, countries. And, uh, uh, and, and, and to the extent possible, uh, such infringements should be time limited. Now, sometimes the threat that they're aimed against is an ongoing threat, uh, as is a, a, the, the threat of terrorism today, uh, so that even something time limited may go on for a fairly long time. But I think if we uh, look to certain basic guidelines like this, we can manage this tension uh, that uh, will enable us to defend ourselves against the enemies of democracy and also not do anything that endanger, that ourselves endangers our democracies. Thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, uh, mentioned the metadata collection, which uh, was also criticized from within the US, but it was very much criticized from Europe. Uh, that criticism ceased to exist almost at all uh, after the first terrorist attacks in Europe. Because once a terrorist attack in Europe happens, the first phone call goes to US asking if US has some leads into what may have happened and uh, looking into the metadata. Uh, uh, so now, uh, since Europe is suffering terrorism, uh, uh, there is uh, less of criticism of met metadata collection. Uh, there are some European countries who started to do the same. Uh, and there are some, like Czech Republic, uh, who is uh, thinking about what we can do and how we can do it, uh, that it is not misused and that we have technologies and that it is according to the law. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, in the subline, it is, uh, uh, about what can the intelligence agencies do and then what can the rest of the country do uh, if, uh, because usually intelligence agencies can do uh, can do more and there is a reason uh, for it uh, uh, but uh, let me ask you a question about US and you, and you have described the metadata collection and uh, and basically the Bush Homeland Security Act etc and the Trump decrees how would you 15 years after 9-11 how would you assess or how would you judge the reaction of the U.S. Uh, system 
uh, uh, readjustment of the U.S. system, uh, regarding the civil liberties and security, and that democratic dilemma. Uh, uh, what's your view on your home country? Well, I, I think uh, uh, maybe it's luck. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it, it seems as if we've been uh, extremely successful, uh, and uh, and there doesn't seem to have been much change. Uh, it, we had the, first the Bush administration, then the Obama administration, that were ideologically very different, uh, and they may have done some things different in this respect. But through both administrations, we've had no. Uh, uh, no uh, major terrorist attack. Now we did have the, uh, uh, two incidents in uh, uh, which uh, in in San Bernardino and then in Florida in Orlando, where a, a, a single shooter went into some place and uh, and uh, uh, killed a lot of people. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether it's possible to stop things like that. We just, this last week, had a shooter uh, who has no apparent political or uh, motivation kill even more people. But, but the kind of terrorist attack that we assumed would happen again after 9-11, an Al-Qaeda uh, type uh, uh, bombing, airplane hijacking, or, uh, has not happened. And uh, yet there have been no real infringements of American liberties. The, 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 the worrisome infringement of American liberties uh, that we're sort of all trying to understand right now is the, uh, the infiltration of Russia into our uh, lives, maybe uh, very much into our social media, and maybe into our election. This is, uh, this is uh, a new threat and may require new kinds of measures to uh, counteract that, but we haven't uh, suffered in our liberties uh, in any way that I can see as a result of uh, whatever additional security measures have been done since 9-11. Well, the truth is that the, about U.S. and it's what I said about Europe, that in U.S. the more terrorist attacks were aborted than those which have happened. Uh, f and there is a fairly good success rate uh, f uh, roughly everywhere. Uh, so there the issues have been taken seriously, uh, and their countries react slightly differently uh, because of their laws, because of their legal system, because of their traditions, uh, because of course uh, the nature of the threats, uh, or the detailed nature of the threats, but there were more terrorist attacks which were planned on the U.S. soil or outside of U.S. soil targeting uh, U.S., uh, which uh, did not uh, succeed. Uh, uh, and the same can be said about, about uh, France, and the same can be said even about Belgium which is, by the way, the worst case example of, uh, of country hit by terrorism, its homegrown terrorism per capita. As, uh, and you can measure it by the attacks, uh, and successful attacks. You can measure it by the attempted attacks. Uh, and uh, you can uh, measure it by the number of uh, foreign fighters, uh, meaning those Belgian citizens who left Belgium uh, have been fighting in Syria or Iraq or elsewhere in the Middle East uh, and uh, either got killed or some of them uh, tried to get back and some of them uh, got back. Uh, my question to Eva is how would you describe the change of uh, uh, discussion in Europe uh, in the last years? And what is the trend or where you think it leads? And what if you could compare three years ago, five years ago and now? What is the, uh, what is the European view on it? Uh, Creative solution. Oh, uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it works. It works. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, uh, I 
cannot speak on behalf of, of Europe uh, as such. The situation is very different between the Czech Republic and the rest of Europe. It is part due to the experience or lack of experience with the terrorism. Uh, thankfully, we do not have um, such experience in this country. We've had a couple of uh, uh, lone wolves attackers in several locations with the guns or with the knives, but these attacks were not motivated politically and these were people who were not sane uh, doing so and uh, because of the greater presence of violence in the media and elsewhere they might have gotten inspired but we haven't seen a terrorist attack here but certainly the collaboration among intelligence services throughout Europe has increased uh, um, when the attacks by the Islamic State uh, were um, less frequent, uh, there was already collaboration, but it has uh, been enhanced. There is good exchange of information and an interest in exchanging information. And we do see also internal improvement of the internal collaboration among the three intelligence services we have in this country. So this is an improvement. What is uh, new for Europe are the so-called soft targets. Europe tries to take uh, 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 to, to learn a lesson from uh, Israel, uh, trying to uh, improve resilience of the population in connection with these soft targets. All countries are trying to inform population how to protect uh, uh, their property, how to um, take uh, care of their projects, let, uh, uh, let's say, uh, how to um, conduct themselves in uh, fora like this one, conferences and, and so forth. Uh, in order, uh, th this is all aimed at improving the resilience of the population. In, in our country, this has not been a need um, uh, until now because people tend not to trust uh, these things, uh, not to trust this uh, drill towards civil protection and so forth. So um, there was a reluctance to involve population in collaborating uh, towards our uh, own uh, security. So these are the two, two new novelties, let's say, in the European context. And I'm now looking for people asking questions from the floor. Uh, please be concise and clear in your question or make a clear and concise comment if you wish to do so. To add to what you have just said, speaking about the Czech context and Czech reality, uh, the soft target here in uh, Prague would be uh, the Old New Synagogue, uh, which is a t tourist uh, site. Uh, this would be a typical um, target for a jihadist, uh, and that's a site that should be subject to protection. For 15 years, there have been discussions about a um, street column to be erected in the middle of the street so that cars cannot pass through. So now, after 15 years, we are hoping that maybe this is going to happen within a year or two. So this is the response time that we have in this uh, country for a measure that would be simple and quick and and uh, uh, easy, and that uh, column could be quite sightly, not, uh, not uh, comparable to the one that was erected in uh, on the Old Town Square. Thankfully, at least we have something there. and. Uh, let me jump in here. I want to
comment and note that this is one of the problems uh, uh, that we see here, and that is how local governments uh, see or uh, this topic, and the, there has been a change in perception uh, recently, uh, and maybe the balance sometimes goes the opposite direction. Uh, the local governments now um, realize they need to focus on this, especially after some of the Christmas market uh, attacks in Germany. Um, so there has been some change during the last uh, uh, year in the perception of the local governments. Well, that improvement, I agree, may, may happen, but it still remains uh, uh, to be seen how it is going to uh, be implemented because it is a question of um, jurisdiction. Local governments say it's not their responsibility. They ask the Greater Prague to decide the government and then the uh, then the historians uh, have their say, and they say they cannot have a column there because it has never been there and it had never been there in the past. So, um, of course, we do not have uh, an unsightly structures in the historic center. On the other hand, the response time or the ability to react uh, uh, has been very, very slow, and now it has improved uh, in uh, uh, face the actual increasing threats. First question here, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Kellen. I represent the Russian minority on the Government Council for Minorities. We are talking about uh, terrorism here largely rather than about things. Uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, there are hundreds or maybe thousands of victims of terrorism, but that's comparable to a large traffic accident. But we have a much greater risk to face, and that is the risk of totalitarian regimes, which produce uh, millions of victims. And the defense or protection that we, try, we speak about is always lagging one step uh, uh, behind. Perhaps we should try to remove the source of the infection rather than to deal with its consequences. And I am speaking about the Russian regime, the powers uh, that have replaced democracy. And when you think about uh, the 1990s in Russia, this is a logical outcome that has a logical explanation. My friends in Russia uh, are trying to are seeking EU's help in creating an information portal, internet information portal, which would uh, compensate the lack of knowledge among the Russian population about democracy, which uh, um, the, the lack of knowledge and information actually led to this collapse of democracy in, in Russia. Is anybody thinking about this within the European Union or in the United States uh, about helping with this information portal? Because the idea is that this information portal uh, could serve as a distance learning tool. Um, uh, young people ask about what democracy really is. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages? The present opposition in Russia has discredited itself, but the new generation could direct the country in the right direction. However, without uh, the help, without <coughs> needed help, they cannot succeed in doing so. Uh, yes, the question is is uh, clear, and you said that we are always one step behind. Um, however, it is for a fact that every innovation we uh, adopt results in an innovation adopted by the by the other side. So perhaps this is a question that.
Your Czech view and the US view, uh, both continents have been dealing with Russia uh, ever increasingly in the last couple of years. You want to start? Well, uh, in, in the US, we have, uh, we have some, I, I don't know about this portal that you're describing, uh, but uh, we have uh, Voice of America and, and uh, Radio Liberty, and uh, they're uh, uh, perennially uh, underfunded as our other uh, U.S. information programs and uh, 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 information programs being a, a general label for, for different ways of trying to uh, uh, communicate with, with foreign publics. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I quite agree with you that we uh, ought to do uh, a lot more, uh, but uh, I'm uh, at this moment not optimistic that the U.S. is about to do more because uh, uh, we have uh, a president now who has a strange relationship uh, with Russia, which uh, still needs to be understood. It is possible. Uh, uh, there is a kind of a building uh, backlash in the U.S. against the Russian intervention in, in, uh, in our election. And I think that uh, mostly Americans are waiting to uh, hear the results of this special investigation that's uh, uh, going on in the Justice Department. And uh, if this investigation brings to light some uh, particularly uh, uh, nasty or shocking things, uh, then uh, I, I think there's a possibility for a pushback in Congress. I don't know where that would leave the administration, but for a pushback in Congress in the direction of uh, doing more things, saying, well, uh, Russia is uh, intervening in our public life in an underhanded way lets us uh, I intervene more in R Russian public life, not in an underhanded way, but through open uh, uh, sharing of information. Maybe. I hope that will happen. Let me at the EU view. I don't need to explain to you in particular that Czech Republic doesn't uh, cover its Russian-speaking minority with the information. We are not uh, an EU member state that would be active here. However, the EU promotes uh, the policy in this direction to support independent Russian journalism. There are some funds allocated to that. And in terms of education, we I don't know about any project right now. However, uh, this is been marginalized uh, in the Czech Republic and in the EU. There is not a single opinion on uh, the approach to Russia. The EU doesn't speak in one voice. Uh, sanctions to Russia, sanctioned personalities, uh, sanctioned industries, uh, that was a single success. And most of the energy in the EU spent on the Russia is wasted because one party uh, promotes sanctions and uh, freedom, the other party wants to break it. So support of youth, support of education would be a less controversial topic. It might be easier to raise this topic within the EU. However, persons whose agenda is uh, relationships with Russia uh, mark 
marginalize it uh, because they uh, tackle other problems. This is why it is uh, so difficult to pursue such idea. Uh, technical rem Are there any further questions? Uh, Voice of America, další program. Voice Voice of America and other such programs financed by the United States uh, uh, have been discredited in Russia so badly by the propaganda. So anything that comes from the U.S. is the voice of the devil, the voice of the enemy that wants to destroy us. We have to focus on Russian sources, Russian oppos uh, opposition sources. Uh, let me say one sentence here. I dare say that uh, speaking about the community of individuals who uh, are active in relations to Russia, they do not uh, agree on the fact that there is lack of information or limited access to information. Internet is not as regulated in Russia as it is, for instance, in China. And um, I know there is an idea or the, the thinking that it is not about a lack of information that uh, the po population is informed and uh, about the criticism of Russia. So maybe that's why the engagement you seek is not as high. Good morning. Uh, I am a citizen of Prague, and therefore I would like to um, keep this question to our home base here. Uh, Mrs. Romantsovova said uh, that the problem may be how these uh, violent acts are presented by media, even though we don't have terrorist attacks. I feel the same. Sometimes the motivation of these sick individuals is to be famous. And then Mr. Poyer spoke about the soft targets, and he gave the example of the synagogue and the fact that this road obstacle uh, or the road column is, uh, has been contemplated for 15 years. The, the the castle, the Prague Castle, I believe it is one of the one of the soft targets and the Prague Castle uh, has recently built the um, security frames to enter and the media presented it uh, in a way um, not portraying it as something that we're trying to protect our uh, heritage here, our uh, sites. Uh, it was presented by the media that it is a show of the president's arrogance or the power's arrogance. And uh, I want to ask Mrs. Romantsovova whether this these uh, security frames are uh, reasonable and whether you felt it was presented objectively in the media. Well, the way media uh, present the government's decision, the, there is a good tradition in the Czech media to be very critical of anything that the government does. And in my own experience working for the security policy department, I know that any security measure is intensely criticized by the media. And I think this, this really fits well in the context of how media inform about government measures. As regards these uh, security frames um, at the Prague Castle, this is not anything that would just come to us from the Mars. Uh, under uh, Klaus, uh, the security situation has been reviewed, had been reviewed of the Prague Castle, and there were proposals as to how to improve it. Of course, you can always discuss uh, about the adequacy of such measures, but uh, these uh, frames were installed in cooperation with the police, and it was not a certainly not a unilateral decision of the president or his staff. There was. Uh, there was there was a great uh, uh, input and decision um, making contribution by the law enforcement by the police. Uh, so the, if this is was if this was criticized as arrogance of the the, the powers 
that B, then it uh, would have to go to the police as well. The methodology of protecting of self targets uh, um, is quite complex, and some of these uh, um, specific frames may not be so well designed and thought through because they lead to lines, cues, which in themselves become soft targets. So it may be problematic. And uh, for me personally, I go there once a year. And uh, for that one visit, I am willing to endure the line. And for tourists, uh, they are used to such measures and they do not feel that this is uh, a problem. I, I think it's more uh, that the Czechs themselves feel that this is um, a deterioration and to limiting their uh, right of her access. Well, this there was a problem uh, on the first day, uh, and there was a big <coughs> crowd of people that were pushed uh, to the main road and that created that soft target and that certainly wasn't very fortunate but the situation has improved and maybe um, it will be improved e even furthermore perhaps more creatively uh, so that in the fu future um, we can see better, um, we can see some improvement. Unfortunately, we are being sometimes too rigid about uh, security measures and therefore it is too predictable and uh, that weakens the security. Security should be perhaps somewhat more unpredictable and that could make uh, the Prague Castle safer. safer. Mr. Palos. I wanted to stay silent because I was worried that I will not be as concise and to the point as you wanted me to be. But I do have to say something now. Uh, Mr. Uh, Moravchuk, uh, men Moravchuk mentioned the, that the um, measures in the US and uh, the fact that sometimes these measures are being problematic, but they serve the um, they serve the purpose and uh, maybe sometimes politically motivated but then it is very difficult to distinguish between these two things uh, in in the US where there is a permanent campaign ongoing to keep the pres current president supporters alert and uh, here our president and the uh, Minister of Interior quite creatively use their powers to uh, uh, promote their political interests. But the question surrounding the security measures at the Prague Castle, uh, one may suspect that this is a permanent presidential campaign of the current president. If you didn't have this sus suspicion, one may feel that these uh, measures are okay, but why then not the Charles Bridge? Because this would be one of the most sensitive soft targets which could attract, uh, uh, attract attention. Uh, what is important, I believe, that we have a civilized and matter-of-fact debate on this uh, on this issue, um, and uh, a debate that may involve those who are more informed, like uh, the intelligence community, and then uh, regular citizens. My question is as follows: Do you have an a piece of advice, uh, whether from Europe or from the U.S., that would somehow curtail this um, um, tendency to politicize the debate and improve its matter-of-fact nature? Well, think through, think about your answers, and let me say that the last poll results indicate that the Czech army and the Czech police enjoy um, a two-third support by the population, regardless of the um, events. 
So even though we are quite a skeptical nation, there is a good deal of trust to the police, to the army, uh, which is up to two thirds. Please. In the U.S., the, the debates inevitably get politicized. Uh, but uh, uh, my focus is more on the uh, motive of the president or the executive branch in, in introducing some measure or, or other. And uh, I, I, I gave a, a, a series of contrasts in which on the one side I talked about President Lincoln and President Bush, both of whom I, I said did what they did for reasons that seem to me very clearly to be not political, personal political advantage. Uh, nonetheless, the measures were controversial and the controversy tended to be uh, often on partisan grounds. And on the other side, I, I cited McCarthy and I cited Trump, who I think were uh, pretty obviously uh, motivated politically, just uh, uh, in the case of McCarthy, just because he he linked his attacks on on the on communists constantly to attacks on the Democrats, uh, and so he was openly political. And in the case of Trump, uh, because his uh, his uh, ban on these uh, uh, immigrants. Uh, was clearly couched in terms of uh, uh, fulfilling his campaign promise, and it was uh, uh, it was introduced to the country in a very uh, odd way, the way you you, you might do a, uh, a a political gesture, but not the way you would do a security gesture, because there was no effort to uh, uh, inf inform much less consult with the uh, uh, leading uh, security branches or the leaders of the other party or, uh, or, or anybody. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, so I, I think there's probably no way to prevent the debates over uh, the executive's measures from becoming uh, politicized. But, uh, uh, and of course there's no way to assure that the president won't do political things. Uh, if you're asking is there any uh, uh, algorithm where we can tell for sure whether a president's actions are political or, or, or not, I don't know of any algorithm, but I, I think it's uh, not too difficult to, uh, to, to, for uh, uh, dispassionate people who are concerned just about the welfare of the country and the safety of the country to, to make a pretty good judgment as to uh, uh, when the president is acting just for the welfare of the country, even if he's wrong, as some people thought Bush and Lincoln were wrong, uh, and, and, or on the other hand, doing things that have the odor of being politically motivated. Me neither. I have no advice how to uh, how to upgrade the debate, how to avoid uh, the politicization. But from the point of view of uh, state administration, uh, I can see what the administration fails to do, and this is to communicate. This is the root cause of the problems concerning the debate in the Czech Republic. Uh, press departments of uh, individual departments and ministries are perceived as uh, uh, 
spokespersons of uh, individual politicians, and you'll surely agree with me uh, that a strategic communication of uh, relevant topics is failing. They the ministries only respond to critical remarks and critical voices. And what we need is a prior communication before the measures, prior communication of uh, alternative solutions, of uh, risks, and uh, in cooperation with foreign partners like Finland, the US, the UK, uh, we, within the audit of national security, will strive to build up a new model of strategic communication of the government. I don't dare to say how long it will take to build up such a system. However, the authorities should communicate the topics in a consolidated way. They should be consistent and they should agree upon the lines to take to be presented to the public. Uh, media uh, ministries shouldn't communicate with each other through media. This is substandard. And, uh, that's, this undermines the trust and public debate. We should implement the lines to take in uh, the uh, activities and behavior of the politicians. The state, the government should communicate in the consistent way. They should not steal uh, each other's topics. They should be able to communicate in a harmonized way, as we see in Finland. In Finland, they have coalition governments, and uh, they are able to communicate the topics together. Uh, the administration should be able to communicate in a consolidated way and not to hijack the debate in a swamp uh, on a very low level. Migration crisis is the uh, good example of this swamp. The government was not able to communicate to uh, the Czechs what are the risks uh, and uh, now we can see that the general public uh, believes uh, lies and rumors. Uh, people should be able to rely on common sense, not on the uh, nonsense uh, that they are hearing. Future of five years or ten years. Will, will there be more surveillance and less freedom in Czech Republic, Europe, and the United States, or not, or not necessarily? What's your crystal ball prediction? I can make a prediction about uh, the United States, but uh, um, uh, there will certainly not be less freedom. I don't think the uh, surveillance we've had uh, has created any less freedom. And uh, even with the uh, metadata collection that was uh, curtailed, uh, there was uh, uh, a, a great deal of misunderstanding about that, but uh, there was, uh, uh, there was, as far as we know, uh, no eavesdropping and 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 uh, except with due authorization in in a, in those cases where they found evidence of uh, uh, of suspicious uh, lines of communication uh, and uh, uh, in a sense in a very tragic way. Uh, this this horrible event in Las Vegas 
shows that this surveillance did not go outside the bounds that it was intended because uh, 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 certainly if someone had been uh, in, uh, in touch with foreign terrorist organizations, uh, they could not have bought all those guns that this, uh, that this guy who did the shooting uh, in Las Vegas bought, but uh, nobody, nobody knew about him. Uh, so uh, I, I just think there'll be uh, uh, over, the, you said, the next handful of years, there probably will be uh, further uh, technological advances by the intelligence agencies, just as there is the constant evolution of the social media platforms. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't think it will infringe any freedom. And I think that probably uh, the, the, what, what's, what's on the agenda, it seems right now, is uh, the, the question of Russian interference in, in American life. This is a new question. I think it's very alarming to many Americans. And uh, uh, I, I, I see that maybe uh, uh, taking a, a, a prime place ahead of some of the terrorist groups in terms of a focus of U.S. investigations and activities by our, our own uh, uh, intelligence agencies. I don't know what to what is going to ha uh, happen. I can see a number of scenarios, among them the one where we are more under surveillance and less secure. But I'm hoping uh, for an opposite scenario that we will keep our freedoms and the surveillance that will may increase will not uh, uh, impinge on our freedoms. And I believe um, for the future, what we're going to see is that I am hoping to that the public will be less trustful of the virtual um, uh, world that we live in today and that people will not be as uh, trusting and as uh, ready to provide their uh, personal data or other information about them to provide this for the benefit of this virtual space that is uh, so unknown to uh, to them and it's not only their own government that has access but many other um, uh, organizations as well 